We are part three. Say part three. I'm sorry. We don't say part three. We're part four. Part four, we're the final. It's the final message on this series we've done, uh, which has been a great emotion sickness. It's been the title of our series. Uh, I've had a lot of fun with this. Uh, but, you know, I think if nothing else, it's helped us to realize I mean, though we have emotions that, that are good, God-given, but if we're not uh, fixing our eyes on Christ, following after Him, our emotions can lead us instead of us being in control of our emotions. And that emotions can be a good thing, but they can also be a thing that will uh, get you in trouble. And so we've been dealing with this whole topic of emotion sickness. And uh, this morning, and it's just really cool kind of how it turned out, especially given all the words that have come forward, uh, the ministry time this morning, uh, we're, we're talking about burnout, uh, dealing with or beating burnout. How many of you know about burnout or felt a little burnout at, at once or twice in your life or somewhere along the road? It's something we all have dealt with or will deal with at some level. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that. I want us to just go to our text. Go to Exodus chapter 27. Exodus chapter 27. We're going to look at verse 20. This is a very kind of interesting time in Israel's history. They had come out of Egypt. They'd been in bondage for some 400 years. Now they were in the wilderness. God had given them instruction on how to kind of set up a place for his presence. We call it the tabernacle of Moses. And so here is some very specific instruction that's given to the Israelites concerning a lamp. Now look at this verse, verse 20 of Exodus 27. You shall command the people of Israel that they bring to you pure beaten oil. Say pure. Say beaten. All right. Pure beaten olive oil for the light. That a lamp may regularly be set up to burn, verse 21, in the tent of meeting outside the veil that is before the testimony, Aaron and his son shall tend it from evening, now look at this, from evening till morning. In other words, it's to be tended 24-7, 365. From evening till morning before the Lord, it shall be a statute forever to be observed throughout their generations by the people of Israel. So a lamp was to be set up outside of the Holy of Holies for the purpose of showing or representing this very incredible picture that there is a fire, there is something that is within us that God wants to continually burn in us. God's Spirit, how many of you know, needs to continually burn in us. As it does, it affects other people. Can you say amen? Hopefully this will work. Oh, look at that. I'm going to light the lamp. I'm sure that lamp in the Holy of Holies looked just like that one right there. Positive. It just needs a star of David on it somewhere, probably. So this lamp is important to God instructing the children of Israel as they set up uh, this tabernacle of worship, the place of his presence. Now, Burnout, and there's a couple of things I want to show you in this verse. The two words that I made you emphasize was pure and beaten. We're going to get to that here in a minute. But burnout is this. This isn't really as much about how long you live as it is about how you live. God's concerned about how you live your life. Would you agree with me on that? Yeah. You guys out there? You guys good? Did you get your cappuccino this morning? Everybody awake? He's concerned about how you live, man. He's concerned about how you live. See, can, I, I can just say this. Uh, it's just pretty, this is a pretty easy statement to say right now. Uh, that many of us live way under uh, the gifting that God's put within us. We live way under our capacity to serve Christ and to be an anointed minister of God. We live way under that. Why is that? Well, because there's a very real devil, there's a very real hell, there's a very real kind of demonic antichrist spirit always around us, yelling in our ears. There's a spirit of accusation that always comes against us that wants to keep us down, that wants to keep us uh, from being the, uh, realizing, if you will, the untapped potential that's within us. Would you agree with me on that? The enemy's always there. He comes to do what? Steal, kill, and destroy. 
And he's always there trying to hammer you with shame and guilt and condemnation. And as the result of it, we're not living up to the standard that Christ has created us to live up to. The the light's not burning. Something's happened to the oil. There's a shortage of oil. Something's going on. There's a statistic that says 60% of Olympic athletes have experienced burnout. I I, I would probably completely agree with that statistic. See, the, the, the more passionate we are about something, the more likely you are to burn out. That, that flame that's on the inside of you can turn on you if your eyes aren't fixed on Jesus. My best friend has a son, uh, Jay Reed. Joseph Reed's my best, best friend in the world, and his son was a phenomenal uh, basketball player. People were saying, without question, he's going to be a D1 player. He's about 6'3", could hit a three-point shot anywhere on the court. Kid played basketball from when he was a little bitty up. And about the time he was in his second year, I think, he was in a great program in Lubbock, Trinity Christian Schools, a great basketball program. A lot of kids go D1. And he got to that point, and just one day he walked into his dad's room, and mom's dad, mom and dad's room said, I quit. I'm done. I can't do it. And he quit. He quit basketball. I mean, right when he was at his potential, I just believe that if, you know, the thing in us that we are sometimes most passionate about, if pushed to the limit, we can find ourselves burned out and never then fulfill the call that's on us. It's like, it's like you know, we, we just find ourselves worn out. We find ourselves weary. So why the talk about this concerning emotion sickness? I believe this. I believe that because a lot of our moods, and the moods, you don't know what I mean by mood. How many of you know we have moods? Good mood, bad mood, angry moods. I mean, we have all kinds of different moods. But a lot of these moods that we experience are the result of maybe unchecked, maybe even unrealized burnout in our lives. Burnout is the cause of, if you will, some of the reason our moods are way out of whack. We're all over the map emotionally. Not because we're bad people, amen, but because we're burned out. Okay. Now, you should have received a bulletin when you walked in the door this morning. And in that bulletin is a little note card, and you can fill in the blanks there. See, there's a method to our madness. We're going to make you stay awake, all right? So you got to follow in your notes. Did y'all get that? So grab your bulletin, pull out that note card, follow with me, fill in the blanks as we go along here. Check this out. Here's the first fill in the blank. Did y'all find your cards? You're looking at me with a blank stare. There's a few cards out there, I hope. All right, watch this. Burnout is when the, and here's the blank, the demands that, you are, that are on you are greater than the resources available to you. Burnout is when the demands that are on you are greater than the resources available to you. Anybody felt that way ever? Yeah. yeah that's incredible. All right, watch this. Here's some, here's some symptoms to burnout. You ready? Some symptoms to burnout. Uh, exhaustion. I hear this all the time. I'm exhausted. I'm so tired. If I, if I had a nickel every time I hear that from folks, just how tired, how exhausted. Come on, y'all know what I'm talking about. I've said it. We all say it. But it's a sign. Maybe there's some burnout beginning to happen. Lack of motivation. Hello. You know, you're just the most motivated person in the world, and all of a sudden you just have no motivation. There's nothing that you want to do. that You just don't want to get out of bed. There's no motivation. Can't get excited about stuff you used to live for. I mean, just we're excited about things, but now, you know, you just don't even want to do it. You know, you, you just don't even want to delve into it anymore. Just not loving what you do, another sign. You just don't love it anymore. Used to love it, but now you don't. Frustration over things that you could fix. But now you don't have the power or will to fix them anymore. Uh, Slipping in areas you used to be strong in, pretty sign, pretty good sign of burnout. Guys out there? So looking at your situation, maybe being frustrated, but not dealing with the root of it, which is something that's rooted down into our hearts. It's like, I I love this, This this is a great point. It's like yelling at your phone for dying when you didn't charge it. Well, you know, plug the thing in. you got to charge them. Can I just say, you get frustrated with yourself, but you've not been plugged in. Your battery's done. You're, you're down to half a bar, man. Amen? And you go to the bar. I mean, that's not good. So, 
go anyway. A lot of people do. So I, here's the truth. I, I believe the oil and the lamps that are being talked about here in Exodus are really a, a more kind of even a direct representation or a picture of our lives and heart. When you look at the tabernacle of Moses, you take every detail that's in that tabernacle, whether it's the, uh, the showbread or if it's, it's the lampstand and all the different things, they all are symbolic of something. And I believe this lamp is symbolic of, the lamp that was in the tabernacle of Moses was symbolic of, of a life, of a heart. So God, in our verse today, is showing his people, look, there's a new way to live. These people were set free. Come on, they came out of slavery. All they ever knew was bondage. God said, I'm going to teach you some new things. Who, who knows this? This is the truth. How many of you know? It, it's a lot easier to be set free than it is to live in freedom. Yeah, I, I see people just get free. I mean, just get set free. We encounter weekends that happen. We, we, we got one coming up. In fact, in October, write it down. 12, 13, 14, 13, 14, 15, something like 12, 13, 14. Right? Yeah, second week in October. Uh, it's incredible what we see happen. But the, the trick, the challenge is for people to walk in the freedom now that they've just discovered. Easier to get set free than to walk in freedom. This is God in a very real sense saying, I want your flame never to burn out. I want you to live, come on, in continual freedom. I don't want you get to, to get back in any way. Boy, you know that this in particular spoke to these who had been slaves all their lives. God's like, I don't, I don't, you want to go back to that? <laughs> You've lived in slavery all your life. I, gotta, I got something for you. You can live in freedom now. But it has everything to do with the light of God burning in us. God isn't just showing kind of the Israelites' new rules, as much as it was that he was really showing them a revelation of himself. Uh, you know, they, they can live in the freedom that only comes from God. That's what he was trying to say. That he, he's the creator of our hearts. He can cause this. So these lamps were a part of the tabernacle. The tabernacle, I mean, you know, is a place where God would dwell. Amen? Where, where's the tabernacle today? Can I ask that question? We're it. Hello, we are the tabernacle of God. He now dwells in us. He came and gave us himself, Jesus. He gave us his Holy Spirit. Did you know that one of the, the most incredible pictures of the Holy Spirit in the Word of God is that he is the oil of the Spirit. He represents that oil that keeps the flame burning. That's one of the pictures of the Holy Spirit as oil, as anointing oil. So today, we're his tabernacles. It's not about a building. I love our building. We've got a great building. Uh, uh, our room or a pastor, necessarily, it's in our hearts now. It's interesting in the verse, it, it says in the verse to command the people to keep the flame lit or to light the flame. Who, who did he tell? It's the people. He, it wasn't the pastors. It's not the pastors. It wasn't the priests. He says for the people to keep it burning. Can I just say this to you? It's not my job to fire you up. Uh, yeah, it's funny to me, I, over all the years, grief, older than dirt now. Don't, don't agree, please. Uh, but all the years I've pastored, you know, and, and you pastor a local church, when you're kind of, the, when, you're the, when you're steady, you, when you're kind of the pillar and you don't move, you see everything that moves around you. And can I say, there's a lot moved around me in 26 years here as the pastor of this church. And one of the things that sometimes happens, people will, will come or they'll we'll find out later. But sometimes they'll come and say, well, pastor, we, we've left. We're leaving the church. Um, yeah. We okay back there? They'll... Yeah, sound systems are incredible uh, in Jesus' name. Okay. Okay. Uh, so they'll come and they'll be like, you know, Pastor, we're leaving. Well, why are you leaving? Well, we're, uh, we're just not getting fed anymore. Really? How long have you known Christ? Oh, we've known him all our lives. We've 20 years plus at least. I've known Jesus for a long And I said, well, so you're leaving because you're not getting fed? And, and, and the comment sometimes I make is, well, aren't, aren't you supposed to feed yourself? I don't even know it would be weird. I got a, I got a 31-year-old son. It'd be, which, by the way, my 31 son and my daughter just had my third granddaughter. Yeah. She's gorgeous, 7 pounds, 19 inches long. 
just beautiful little thing, perfect. Her name is Cove Valentine. Isn't that sweet? Isn't that great? Cove is kind of growing on me. It's taking a little bit of time, but it's growing on me. Beautiful, beautiful. Anyways, it'd be weird if I came home. Jason and Darla are living with us right now. They're fixing to move out to a a house they're going to rent. But it'd be weird if I came home and I I walk in the house and there's Jace, 31-year-old, with like a bib on, looking at me like, I'm hungry, Daddy. Would you feed me? Now, that's strange, y'all. Come on, somebody. That's weird. Okay, it's not any different. People have been in church all their lives. They're looking at me going, well, we're just not getting fed anymore. We're going to leave the church and go somewhere we can get fed. <laughs> and I'm sure all of them stand just like this, man. Well, that's just weird. See, it's, it's not my job to fire you up. Now, you know, listen to me. I, 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 it's my job to preach to you, sure. Try to, to, my heart is to inspire you, to challenge you, but, but the fire is within you, and you can only light the fire. How many of you know this is a relationship with God? Every one of you have it. If you're just trusting on my, if you're just depending on my relationship with God to kind of make you good with God, that's jacked up. You got your own relationship God, with God to deal with. You got your own light to keep lit. You got your own fire to keep lit inside of you. You got to make sure you got enough oil to keep your lamp burning. It's not my job to do that. I want to encourage you. Man, I want to pastor you and love on you and, and do everything I can do to inspire you, but you got to keep your own fire lit. It's a partnership. God's like, man, this is a relationship. I don't even know. As we are faithful to obey Him, it's not by might or power, then He moves in. And takes over. How many know God is, my friend Randy Brown says this all the time. Pastor Scott, God is in control. Amen? You out there? So you see this. So take, you know, take me out of the equation. It's not your mama's job to keep you. Your daddy's job. Not your friend's job. It's not the worship team's job. Your job is your job. Can I say this in your notes? Your fire is your job. Amen? Your fire is your job. To keep your passion intact. So you're in the place now of his presence. God wasn't waiting for you when you got here this morning. He's been with you. (laughs) Amen. You didn't have to come to a building to meet God. When you showed up, this became the church. Otherwise, it's just a building. You're the church. The presence of God is in you. The reason we do TSSM and get behind great organizations like this is because, man, it, it begins to show you who you are. I love what uh, somebody said it. Uh, you said it. Uh, that the first-year students, a lot of times it's just them, them, them discovering themselves, discovering who they are in Christ. Man, you start to realize that. You realize, man, I'm a carrier of the presence of God. There's one thing I can say to you today. It's this. You should be excited about God. I want you to be. But I don't want you to just burn real hot, real high, and real fast. You'll flame out, man. I want you to burn long. Amen? I want you to burn long. If I, if I were to turn this wick up all the way, check it out. I mean, that, that mug's blowing off smoke. We're going to have a fire department here in a few minutes. <laughs> Burning high and hot isn't the point. I mean, you know, this is not a sprint. It's a marathon. There is a process. There is a commitment to relationship. There is a commit. Come on. There's a commitment to process. Man, we don't like process. We want, we're microwave. We want everything quick. We don't want to have to put it in the oven, conventionally speaking, and let it cook over time. And y- y- y'all know what I'm talking When you're hungry and you got that dang frozen lasagna, <laughs> not that my wife ever does frozen lasagna. It's always home-cooked meals in my house, y'all. Baby, it is. <laughs> you got that frozen lasagna. I mean, it's harder than a brick. You're like, I'm going to throw that mug in the microwave, but it just doesn't taste as good. doesn't get them brown edges on it, y'all know. Well, you get that, you get that, and you get that French bread with butter and garlic on there, and that, that lasagna. You got the little crispy edges on that lasagna. You don't get that. You got to put it in a conventional oven. And then you're looking at it, and then you get depressed when it says, freaking hour and a half however long it takes to cook that you're like i'm gonna wait an hour and a half for this thing to cook i'm dying i'll eat it frozen right now i'm so hungry no we don't like process amen well we just we want it quick listen to me man process is the way to go 
y'all. And it, 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 can I say this? It takes committing to something. It takes committing to something. I, 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 I love, I love you guys. And I look out here, I see people in church on a Sunday morning. Sundays are just a great time to sleep in. You've worked your tail off all week long. You're thinking, I don't want to get up and go to church. You know, I just don't want to do it. You know, you heard about the, you heard about the mama that went in to wake her son up to go to church. Y'all heard about this? Probably not. But anyway, so he just, I don't want to go to church. Got to get up. You got to go to church. It's about time to start. I don't want to go to church. Why do I got to go to church? Well, son, you're the pastor. <laughs> Even pastors sometimes don't want to go to church. But see, there's something to getting here, man. You're committed. You, 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 you get in life groups. We're about to start our life groups up, man. You get in a life group. You, you, you get in these marriage classes. You, you, can I just say, we're going to provide every resource we can as a church to help you with your marriage, to help you with your finances. Financial Peace University, my gosh, we had people, we had a class full of people. We're going to offer it again. It's coming again. And we're going to give you every resource we know. But you've got to make the commitment, the decision to go through growth track. Whatever it is, you've got to make that decision. You've got to make that commitment. And it's those things as you commit to them that just keep that flame burning, just even kill, man. Just the fire of God is always burning in you. And man, when it comes time to step up, to pray over someone that needs healing, you pray over that person right then. You come to faith. You don't have to, oh, let me light this thing up real quick. You're trying to light it up. No, you're already, you're already lit. We're going to bring a whole new, whole new meaning to being lit. <laughs> Some of you are laughing a little too hard. Right Look at it, y'all. Come on, y'all know what I'm talking about. You're already lit. You don't have to work something up. You're ready. You're instant in season and out. Amen. Matthew 6, look at this scripture, verse 22. Matthew 6, 22. Let me know the light is within you, man. It says, the eye is the lamp of the body, so if your eye is unhealthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light is in you is darkness. Light in you is darkness, but, but great is the darkness. So what happens when that light goes out. I think it explains why sometimes we don't feel God. We know he didn't go anywhere. What happened? I, I, I believe we just, our light went out. Our light went out. You know, it's, it's difficult to meet with God when, when you've lost yourself. Amen. Three thoughts on how not to burn out. Three thoughts on how not to burn out. Are you ready? Let's jump in here. Let's jump in here. Here's the first one. Number one is right light. Say right light. Right light. The light you look at something in, this is important for you to hear this. The light that you look at something in is just as important as the thing you're looking at. You remember that goofy thing on Facebook, whatever it was, it was the, is the dress blue or purple or green, whatever it was, and every, there was half the people, oh, it's blue. Half the people, oh, it's purple. And it just went back and forth, back and forth. But as, as you kind of look at that, the, 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 the whole trick to that thing, it had everything to do with the light in which you looked at it through. Does that make sense? What was the background light? It makes our eyes process something differently. Y'all understand that? See, when you look at something with the wrong light, you, you'll, you will think you're seeing something that just isn't there. Kim and I, for example, we went this week. We, Jason and I are doing a flip house. We're flipping a house, and I think we flipped it and it fell on top of me. I'm pretty sure that's what happened. We're, we're at a paint stage. Thank you, Jesus. So we're at a paint stage, and we're picking out colors at Sherwin-Williams. And so uh, Jim... Uh, um, McGee. McGee, Jim McGee. Jim's a member of our church. He goes to our Clyde campus. Great guy. Anyway, Jim's showing us. So he said, like, here's the deal. Now, we're under kind of this uh, what, incandescent light in here, and it looks a certain way. So let's take that swatch, that colors, the colors we were looking at. Let's take it outside, look at it there. So we take it outside, and it was really kind of amazing. It did look a little different. It was a, di come on, it was a different kind of light. Now, he said, do this. 
I'm going to give you some paint to go of that color. Take it to your house, paint it in a big spot on the house, and then you'll, you'll see even some more, you'll see some different colors again. So we did it. Sure enough, different kind of lighting, larger area, and we kind of saw even it differently than we did in the store and even outside the store. Come on. It had everything to do with the light in each circumstance. Does that make sense? What is the light on your situation? What does that look like? Your situation, honestly, may not be as bad as you think. If you get your mood, here it is, in the right light. Say right light. You'll see it's true colors. See, we're, we're looking at things too much in the wrong light or in the shadows. That's why maybe when you came to church, you needed to to get it in the right light or get in your life group so you can get things in the right light or get in your accountability group so you can get things in the right light. Get up in the morning, get out of bed, get in your devotional place. Well, when you do that, you're going to get things in the right light. Worship the Lord, spend time in his presence, you'll get things in the right light. Say right light. Here's the second thing, essential oils, number two. Essential oils. Tiffany's out there, I love Tiffany. Tiffany came to my office, she said, Pastor, I got some stuff for you. I mean, it's, essential oil p- people are amazing. Cause I, I believe stuff works. I believe it's, I'm going to kind of fun on it a little bit. But, I, I mean, I'll be like, <laughs> I got a little eczema on my nose. Oh, I got just the right oil for you. <laughs> y'all been, been around essential oil people? Y'all know that? It, you know, it's called uh, oil of oregano. Yeah, whatever. It'll burn my nose off, you know, and then I won't know the eczema's there anymore. I won't have a nose. Or, you know, it's my knee. Uh, it's just been... Oh, pff, you need thieves. What's thieves, man? Oh, dude, just put it on there. Watch what happens. You know, I, I'm making fun of it, but I'm really not. Because I think stuff works. I really think there's something to it. But it's like there's an essential oil for everything. How many of you know there is an essential oil that we have to have to keep our flame burning, to keep our light lit, amen, to stay lit, Right? Now, the essential oil in this situation was is Exodus 27, verse 20. It says it has to be a pure, say pure, beaten, say beaten, olive oil, olive oil. So this wasn't just any old oil. It was very specific. Why? Because here's the truth. If you want to jot this down, it's good. See, the light is only as good as the oil or the fuel that creates it. Does that make sense? So these lamps in the tabernacle, these lamps in us, have to be fueled by the right oil. If you put just any old oil in these things, they'll, they'll burn, but they'll burn out. They, they, they won't burn long enough. And here's very clear. The destruction was supposed to burn from, from evening till morning, from morning till evening, all night long. All night long, all night. Mm, all, night all night long, yeah. Come on, how many of you know we need our oil to burn through the night? We need the oil to burn through the trial we're in or the circumstance we're facing. We need joy in my heart that can last through the night and hard times. Now look at the scripture. It says it has to be beaten. It's like, why do we got to beat things, you know? Why do, why do we have to go through struggle? Why do we have to go through trial? The only way you can get the oil out of the olive is to beat the olive is to press the olive. I went to Israel, been there a couple of times, and man, the olives in the Middle East are just incredible. And there were olive presses everywhere, and there was a process to getting the oil out of the olive. And it requires that the olive be put under stress. The olive has to be beaten in order to get the oil out. Am I saying that God is some cosmic killjoy that just wants to beat you? No, of course not. But God is a good father, and he knows what we need. He will allow struggle and trial and circumstances in our life, and those things will. See, that argument that we had, uh, that I had with my wife uh, this week, which I never argue with my wife. I never have a fight with her because we have a perfect marriage. But the, <laughs> you know, no, no. I mean, I, I, you would think after 34 years of being married to this woman that I would finally figure out that she's right and I'm wrong. 
what the heck? I mean, you'd think you'd figure that out by now. Yesterday, we were, she was helping me, <laughs> helping me at the flip house. And she watches HGTV, man. <laughs> and so she's got all these ideas. And so I'm like, honey, great idea. But if we did that right there, I, I, there wouldn't be any money made on this house. I promise. That was just not going to work. You know, so we had these arguments. Yesterday, I'm, I'm building a uh, kind of a... Uh, rail for the front porch kind of a little just rail and you know so I'm doing it I'm doing it my way she comes out she's like and I'm like oh geez here it comes she's like you need to move it over and run it into the post I was going to run on the edge of the concrete because it's just going to look goofy I'm like it's not going to look goofy it'd be goofy to put the post and so we just have this argument and this fight and then I start looking at it and I'm having to suck my pride up and I'm just like the more I'm looking at it, I'm thinking, dang it, she's right. <laughs> she, then the pride in you doesn't want to admit it, you know. What is that? Man, that's just, that's just God using my wife just to beat the oil out of me. Come <laughs> on. You know what I'm talking about? Because you're like, it's all right. You know, I realize now that argument, that struggle was for my good. Come on. That trial, whatever it is you're going through, whew, and, and, and men just prayed for a few of you here this morning. Some of you guys are facing some tough stuff. And you're like, what in the world? Come on. Can I just encourage you? Get your eyes. Tiffany, you fix your eyes on Jesus, sweetheart. He's the, I know you do. He's the author and finisher of your faith. We get our eyes on our circumstance and problem, then we miss the point. Okay? But we keep our eyes fixed on him. Through the trial, through the struggle, come on, we just get stronger and stronger. The oil supply just keeps growing and growing, and we burn consistently over the period of our life that God's called us on this earth. Come on, y'all. So we got to see that. Oil, oil, we need the oil. Have you checked your oil lately? Man, give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning, burning, burning. Give me oil in my lamp, I pray. Hallelujah, give me all in my life. Keep me burning, burning, burning. Keep me burning till the break of day. Sing, Hosanna. Anyway. Check your oil, man. We need oil in our lamps. Where's your oil? Here's the last thing, and I'm going to wrap this mug up because I'm hungry. When I started talking about that lasagna a while ago, I started getting visions. Of Olive Garden or something. You buying today, bro? Olive Garden? Mm. Man, that toast, when you put that butter on that, y'all know all that French bread and you put the garlic on there? <sighs> Golly. Where was I? Third thing, last thing, then we go home. Pressing thoughts. Say pressing thoughts. I mean, no one wants to burn out. None of us here. I mean, you just be, if I were like, who wants to burn out? Somebody raised their hand. I'd just be like, you're stupid. <laughs> Nobody wants to burn out. We don't, but it's something that happens subtly to us. I mean, you know, the enemy works very subtly. He's like an angel uh, of light sometimes. He comes very subtly, and we look up, and we find ourselves just burn out. So I don't, I don't care who you are. I, 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 I don't want where I am today to be the highest point in my life. I want to go higher. I don't care if you're 75, I don't care if you're 12, I don't care where you're at. How's your oil? What's, what's your oil look like? I, I've got some orange juice up here. Uh, I'll do Havana with pulp. And, uh, and, and I, I'll just say this, it doesn't help my illustration, but I love orange juice with pulp. Because, you, well, especially, like years ago, I did, a, I did a, I don't, by the grace of God, somehow, I did a 40-day fast. Some of you are like, you need to go on another one. Well, I'll tell you what, look at you. <laughs> and, uh, but I, 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 would buy or, I would buy orange juice, the highest pulp I could get. And I'd drink that orange juice, and I'd kind of let the juice go back in my throat. Then I'd save the pulp. Then I'd be like, gosh, this pulp is so good. I mean, <laughs> chew the pulp. But anyway, the point is, the point that I'm trying to make here is <laughs> that I'm not doing a very good job is this. The pulp in my illustration is a picture of impurity in the juice. 
See, there's pulp. If you don't squeeze the olive or press the olive correctly, there are going to be impurities in that oil. What the impurities in turn do, when you go to burn the oil, the impurities cause the thing to smoke. It doesn't burn clean. It doesn't burn correctly. See what I'm saying? So there's a point in which the oil has to be treated in such a way so as to get the impurity. And the only way it can come is through pressing it and straining through that oil and getting all of those impurities out. Um, to, to watch what oil is being put in our lamps is to watch what thoughts sometimes are brought to our mind. Our thoughts sometimes allow impurities, come on, how many know it's a battlegrounds in the mind, there are impurities that come that affect our oil supply, that they affect us. See, the quality is in your notes, the quality of your joy can't exceed the purity of your thoughts. Pure oil, pure thoughts. Amen? So they needed pure oil in the tabernacle just like we need it today. If it wasn't pure, the pulp would cause it to flame out, to burn. Uh, you got to put the right stuff in. I was working part-time when I was about a sophomore in high school. I got a part-time job with a moving company in Slayton, Texas. And they asked me to take the car around back there and fill it up. And uh, you, you need to, or truck, it was a truck. And so you can go pick up this whatever, deliver this furniture. Went back, so I saw what looked like a gas tank. It was a tank and had like a gas nozzle on it. I think it looks like the right thing to do. So I filled the tank up. Turns out it was with naphtha. It's a cleaning agent. It wasn't gasoline. So I drive around the corner, man, that thing starts sputtering and making all kinds of racket. I put the wrong thing in. How many of you know, if you don't put the right things in you, you're going to sputter and burn out. You're going to get in big trouble. I lost my job over that deal. <laughs> anyway, that was kind of cruel. Give me a break, man. Shoot. Right up there, naphtha. Well, it turns out it was written up there. I just didn't notice. But anyway, I mean, no, it matters. Here's in your notes. It matters what you fill up with. Amen? It does. It might feel good to kind of have that certain person in your life, but don't think that that certain person is one that can fill you up. Some of you look to things to fill you up. Come on. But they're the wrong things. What are you expecting? What are you doing? What are you looking to to fill you up other than Jesus? Are you out there? You don't get oil from unpressed olives. You have to press them. It takes a pressing. I'm realizing that more and more in my life, it's the pressing in my life that helps me to get the pure oil out. Here's some things that you have to see pressed out. You have to see them burnt out or to be beat out. Four things are in your notes. Misinterpretation is the first one. Overgeneralization is the second. Obligation the third. And disqualification is the fourth. These four things have to get out of your oil. Amen? Misinterpretation, just very simply, we wrongly read people's moods and put our bias on others or we get judgmental is another way to say it. Anybody here besides me ever get judgmental? We all do. And then we allow those things to reflect on ourselves if we're not careful. Overgeneralization, this is when you maybe let one situation happen and apply it to your life. You kind of start making these statements. This always happens to me. You ever been there? This always is said about me. If you're married, there are two words that you never use in marriage, and they are both overgeneralization. Over Overgeneralizational words. <laughs> the first one is never, and the second one is always. You never have homemade lasagna. <laughs> well, you always complain. Well, you never, uh, well, you always, uh, and you never, uh, and you all, come on, that's overgeneralization. I mean, you know, you're not going to get anywhere when you overgeneralize. You got, we got to, come on, we got to beat that stuff out. Amen? Got to get it out of our vocabulary. Obligation, that's just very simple. When you have this attitude of having to instead of getting to. Well, you have to do something. If you have to do things, it'll take your joy. You'll lose your joy. It's a privilege. We get to. No, we don't have to. We get to. Got to get that out. Disqualification is very simple. When you sell yourself short. 
because you don't think you deserve something. Something or someone has said, someone comes, you say some, they say something nice to you. You think, oh, you know, whatever, they don't mean it. You know, shut up, yeah. Receive that. That's, that's you disqualifying yourself. Amen? Quit disqualifying yourself. Come on. When you look at those first letters, look down that, what's it called? Acrostic. What do you see? Mood. Mood. Is your mood in the right light? We got to get our mood. Come on, church. Can you say amen? We got to get our mood in the right light. Has this helped you all today? Praise God. I want everybody to bow your heads. I'm going to pray over you. Amen. I want to pray over you. I want to bless you. And here's my prayer today, man. I, I just really believe that if you're here today, you're on the verge of burnout, that something can shift today. You realize that you, 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 your oil supply and where it needs to be. You've not depended on the Holy Spirit. You, you've you've kind of decided that you're going to fix your problem and uh, you've decided that, that you're smart enough you can fix it and, and you just have kind of turned your back on the Lord and the Lord's like, I'm right here, man. You've gotten to a place maybe to where you uh, aren't trusting Him. You're trusting in your own ability. Come on, can I just say you'll burn out in a hurry when you trust in your own strength. Yeah. Just wherever you are today, just whatever's going on, whatever trial you're in, man, I, I'm praying today that you get the right perspective. Lots been said today about casting our cares on Him, trusting Him, letting the, the light of His presence help us to see what really He wants us to see. So just put your hand over your heart as I pray. I just want to pray this over you. Father, I just pray today that we get a whole new perspective. Father, I want to thank you today that you, Lord, are going to, to absolutely give us wisdom in all that we do. God, I, I pray that if there are those here on the verge of burnout or some that are in burnout, that God, that that be reversed, that they get our, that their eyes back on you and, and not their circumstance. That, Father, they get their oil supply back where it needs to be. They get the impurities out of their oil. Lord, I'm praying that for myself because I've been there. And God, we just are asking for breakthroughs across this room. God, I thank you for re restoring the joy of the Lord to hearts here today. The joy of being in your presence. The joy of, 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 of living and loving, walking with you. Restore our first loves, God. I pray in Jesus' name, bring that joy back. Thank you, Father, for victory today over burnout in Jesus' name. Just heads bowed across the room. One last question. You're here today and say, Pastor, I don't remember a time that I ever publicly confessed Jesus as, as, my, as being my Lord and Savior. And I realize today I'm, I'm a lot in the place I'm at today because I've, I've never even gave my heart to Christ. And I, I know that today I need, to make a, a, I need to make a decision to give my life to Him. And if you're here today, just across the room, just by raised hand, you'd say, Pastor, I want to give my heart to Jesus today. Anybody at all in this room that would just say, Jesus, I say yes to you. Right up here, yes. Right over here, thank you guys. Just, man, just the courage. Our ushers are bringing you something. I want you just to receive this. Just anybody else. I've had two or three here. Thank you guys. Man, bless you guys. All three of you, bless you guys. Over here on my left. Anybody at all? Anybody else? Just would say, man, I, I, I realize today I need to give my heart to Christ. I want him to be the Lord and Savior of my life. Amen. Now, together with me, would you all just pray this very simple prayer? But it's a very powerful prayer. And we're, we're going to forever end the doubt that you have as to where you're going to end up when you pass from this life. We're going to put that to rest once and for all. You can know that as the, as the result of this day that you can live eternally with Christ was it is it uh, August 26th that from this point on in your life this was your spiritual birthday you never have to doubt again pray this prayer with me Lord Jesus I ask you today to come into my heart take control of my life I ask you to forgive me of my sins set me free from my bondage thank you for saving me and delivering me Thank you for restoring joy in my life. 
I want to be your disciple. I want to follow you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name. Can you say amen? amen? Come on, let's give the Lord praise for these. Bless you guys, several of you. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Man, you, you, you guys that raised your hand, you should have received a card from me. That's very important that you take just a minute, fill that card out. Please do that. Fill that card out and then check it out. Right when the service, our Pastor Dennis is right up here, right through these double doors, back to my right, your left. Uh, we have an orange table that says, this is your day. Bring that card. We have a whole bag of stuff we want to give you to help you uh, and to help begin this new walk in Christ. So, so proud of you guys.